Right, hello everybody. You join me today staring at RAF Mona. More or less, give or take a few miles, slap bang in the middle of Anglesey and a small. Yeah, so this little story, when I say it takes place more or less at the end of World War One, what I mean is, almost this day was the uh, 11th day of the 11th month, wasn't it? At 11 o'clock in the morning. Well, this story starts in 1915, really. And it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we've just said it's RAF Mona. It never used to be RAF Mona. It used to be RNAS Langevny, which is Royal Naval Air Service. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm thinking, what on earth are we talking about? We're in the middle of the Fleming countryside. Was it a training base? Nope. So, let's go back to 1915 when this was created. Once upon a time, we were at war. It was a massive war, as we all know, the Great War. And one of the tactics the Germans were using was to starve Britain into submission, into surrender. <laughs> so, they had dew boats even back then in World War One. Hello sheep! So they get their U boats and they're trying to sink the traffic. Just like they did in World War Two, that a lot more people are familiar with. So what we're gonna do about sorry, I just need to know where I'm going. Yeah, okay, I can't go down that one. Um, what we're gonna do about it? The government decided we're gonna tackle this Adam Z ships, obviously, from the Royal Navy. But flying was a new thing, so they set up the Royal Naval Air Service. So they need airplanes, obviously. And then to have airplanes, you need airfields. So, to protect the Irish Sea, they decided to put, amongst other places, an airfield on Anglesey. Now they could have done something like RAF Valley right by the coast so it's got quick and easy access to nip out and tackle Johnny Foreigner as they would say in those days or tackle the Hun I think they would have said anyway back to the story no 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 the Royal Naval Air Service have a much better idea they're not going to use sop with camels or Vimmers Vickies or sorry Vickers Vimmies or anything of the sort no 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 that'd be far more so sensible they're going to use airships because they're slower and steadier but they have a longer endurance but they're really slow but they have endurance uh, yeah so I'm sure a lot of us can um, sort of equate to that uh, scenario in our older years anyway back to the story so RNAS decide to build an airship station they, they build it by the coast to protect the sea. No, 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 they build it right in the middle of Anglesey. So, yeah, that doesn't make any sense to me either, but hey-ho, that's what they did. So we're now going to fast forward to 1918. And as we all know, at the 11th hour, 11th day, at the 11th month, armistice was declared. Now, as you can imagine, we, um, as nations all over Europe and over many countries over the world, we're in celebration at the end of all this carnage. So, I'd like you to picture the scene. Let's fast forward again from 11 o'clock. Armistice is declared. Everything's really good. 
let's have a few drinkies in the officer's mess, shall we? Say the officers. Now, it's been described, it's described as that they were in high spirits. Okay, that was the um, description that was used. Personally, I'm going to go with the fact they were probably all Brahms. During the evening's festivities, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that, they were having a good time, they deserved it. The country's been through hell. They've been to hell and back. I've never met her myself, but I'm sure she's a very nice girl. Um, yeah, so the country's been to hell and back. But I'm digressing again. Senior Naval Officer Captain Gordon Campbell, VC, is chatting away and he challenged RAF CO Major Tommy Elmhurst to do something pretty outrageous with one of his airships. What he said was, I bet you, sir, I'm paraphrasing obviously, I bet you, sir, can't get your damn blimp under the Menai Suspension Bridge. To which the reply was probably something along the lines of, possibly slurred as well, well damn you sir, I'll do it. I'll get my jolly good airship, my fine airship, my SSZ-31 under the Menai Bridge. Well, says Captain Gordon Campbell of VC. If you do that, I'll come with you because it's jolly dangerous. But it'll be a jolly good wheeze, won't it? Yes, 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 it will, sir. We'll do it. And so the seeds were set for a unique event in world aeronautical history. Something that apparently has never happened before and will never happen again. Basically because it was blimmin' stupid, right? So what happens next? Well, let's fast forward to me at Menai Bridge. So here we are, the next day, so that'll be the 12th of November, Elmhurst pops down here. Now, just so you can see, here is Menai Bridge. Good old Elmhurst. He comes out here. So I reckon what he would have done is he would have come and chosen the midpoint of the bridge. Because that's going to be the highest point, isn't it? Right. So the midpoint will be where the suspending chains are closest to the deck, I'm going to say. God, this is scientific, isn't it? One, two, three, five, six, seven, nine. So I'll be about this one here. I'm gonna guess about here. Either this side here, or you might have gone that side there. I don't know if you can see, but there's Britannia Britannia Bridge over there. And heading out there, you can just see the end of the pier, the Manga Pier. For those of you who are interested, that rig brick building is where the Beatles stayed when they went to visit uh, one of these gurus. I'll uh, add in here the proper name. So it was here. What he did was he threw his rope over down there. Blah, 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 blah. Boop, splash. No expense spared with these sound effects. Measures the gap and finds he's airship if you take from the top of the envelope that's the gas bag to the bottom of the gondola the bit what they sit in is four foot less than this drop so he knows he can do it but he also knows it's going to be really tight so he has to come up with yeah an accurate way of measuring the 
gap that you you need probably with a hangover over a hundred years ago so the solution they came up with a bit of rope with a brick on the end or, or some weight anyway so a plumb line in other words when the object touches the water we then know we are two feet above the surface and in theory we've got two, two feet headroom above the hydrogen envelope. Let's join me back at the bike and uh, we'll carry on telling you the story. Oh this hill's a bit steep isn't it? Um, so they've measured it and found out it will work. Now you have to rem remember these guys aren't like poor little Tommy Atkins stuck in mud on the western front suffering away. These, these are more like Lord Flash Art. I have to get on the bike three times a day, take it to heaven and back. Woof! They're real gung-ho characters. Anyhow, there they all are. They're in a lovely time, everything's good. They get their bit of string. Waiting for low tide. And on November the 14th, 1918, pilot Major Tommy Elmhurst, passenger Gordon, sorry, Captain Gordon Campbell VC, and flight engineer South African Captain BJ Beaton, set off on board the airship Sea Scout 031, SSZ 31, and headed to Menai Straits. Off they went. Now one of the things you've got to remember about airships is they're not like aeroplanes. Aeroplanes, the lift is generated by wind. They have this massive great gas bag. In those days it was full of hydrogen. Nowadays they'd use helium. But then it was hydrogen. And as we all know, hydrogen goes pop up very easily. And you only have to look at film of famous airships of the 30s and you know just how dreadful they can be. So these guys are messing around, they're really being dangerous. Words got around, there are even spectators. Now, with the airship, because of its massive area, it's going to be a little bit susceptible to wind. And also, in order to actually be able to use any of the control surfaces, the airship has to be travelling at least 40 miles an hour. So we, we're faced with that. Here's these bunch of jolly good chaps. I mean, you know, they're brave. One of them's got a VC, a Victoria Cross. So they're not idiot, you know. They are probably being idiots here, but you know, they're, they're brave chaps. They set sail, they're in the air, they've got their 40 mile an hour. They approach, yes, they approach the bridge with vim and vigour as they would in those days. They drop their little rope plop, into, the, into the water, it's skimming the surface. This means they are now two feet above the water. If they hit the water, they're toast. They're dead. If they hit the, uh, what do they call that thing? The bridge. If they hit the bridge, they're toast. The people on the bridge are toast. The bridge is toast. Everyone's toast. It's going to be carnage. There's going to be explosions. And hold access to Anglesey is going to be really up the spout, isn't it? Anyway, they do it. There they go. They actually succeed. They get under the bridge. They're not hanging around 40 miles an hour under the bridge. Two feet to spare at the top. Just two feet. 60 centimetres. Two feet to spare at the bottom. 60 centimetres at the bottom. That's all they had. 
they managed it they were elated they were overcome with joy they celebrated carried out a massive bank I believe to port and nearly crashed yeah they nearly crashed and killed a load of people they, they got away with it they, they managed to regain control and get sorted but yeah they did so there you go the first and last time an airship has gone under a bridge all the result of a probably drunken challenge in an officer's mess on a Royal Naval base situated as far away from the sea on a particular island as they probably could have got it and after having successfully managed not to kill everybody they very nearly did well there you go hope you enjoyed that bit of a rubbish old story a uh, bit of a fun one though for for now you know being close to uh, this one's coming out on the 31st of March so close to uh, April the 1st But it isn't an April Fool story, it's all true. The photographs that you can find on the internet uh, aren't real, they're made up. Okay, we know that because the airship's much smaller than the bridge, but there you go. It's all true. The log, the flight log, was submitted to uh, the appropriate authorities, so that existed. Yep, it happened. So it's not an April Fool, might well has been. So as I'm having a good thrush along, I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, yeah, join me again for some more fun and frolics on the bikes, exploring Wales and beyond, and finding out some interesting bits of history and some stories that hopefully will entertain you. Thanks for watching, see you again soon. Bye.